Hey, 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 this is Natasha, and I'm really excited to be speaking with Taja Martin. How are you? I'm great. I'm super excited to be talking to you. I'm super excited awesome. to be on this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So let me share with everyone uh, just how amazing you are. So Kaja, you are a touring stand-up comedian and online personality who's talents in comedy and producing entertain millions of viewers every week. You've helmed several successful online shows, to name a few, The Equals 3 Show, Top 6, Booze Lightyear, Comedians On, and Date Debate. You have also uh, launched them onto network platforms such as Netflix and Verizon Go 90 with the original series Riley Rewind and Miss Earth. In film, you've been fortunate enough to uh, be the executive producer with brothers Jay and Mark Duplass for their 2015 comedy thriller Manson Family Vacation. Generally, you are committed to your passions for writing, directing, stand-up comedy, and acting, and uh, currently... You are teaching your dog Neptune, a French bulldog, to read and write. I love it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> How's that That's going? That's my How hardest is... challenge. Uh, really? you, yeah, I mean, sometimes I feel like he's not listening to me. Is the is the biggest Aww. challenge? Like he, yeah, and it's hard for him to hold a pencil. Like you know, yeah. So, but you, you, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. I love it. So now what motivated you, before we get to you and all the amazing things you do, what motivated you to uh, make Neptune become a reader and writer? Well, I think he's the smartest dog in the world, um, obviously. And so just knowing that, I was like, if any dog can do it, it's going to be him. That's dope. I love it. And also sounds like a wonderful show. So uh, FYI. <laughs> I would totally watch that and rewatch um, episodes of Nested <laughs> reading and writing. And I, I feel like people listening are also going to be like, huh, I wonder if my pooch can do that. That's fascinating. So <laughs> I'll tell you, my dog definitely couldn't. Um, JJ is no, not so much. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a thankless job. So it's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So now on to you. Um, how did you become like who you are today? Like all the talents that you have, is this something that you've been essentially crafting and working on as a kid? Did you fall into it? I'd love to hear that story. Yeah. I mean, I think to a certain extent, I've been doing this all my life. I was always trying to make people laugh. I, I have this like wild, crazy curly hair. And I always say like, I was born with the hair for comedy. Yeah. So <laughs> it, that has just been one thing I think where whether people have reacted to it negatively or positively, uh, having comedy and making people laugh, uh, you know, as a defense technique or as something to just have in common with other people, that mm. has been something that I have done a lot of. And, and yeah. <laughs> and what are some of the challenges of being a comedian and trying to kind of, I uh, guess, navigate our current day uh, tone of our society where you want to you want to make people laugh, but not, you know, make fun of people. But then also, you know, like it's hard to not offend. Right. How do you navigate that? Yeah, well, in general, I am a very happy person and I'm a very happy comedian. Uh, I'm not what's considered a blue comic, so I don't really swear. And I don't really spend a lot of time putting people down. And I think that's just because in my life, I, as we talked about, like, the world we live in, there's so much negativity and so much hate coming from all sides that, like, the least that I can do with my friends and family and with people that pay to come see me or just anybody that wants to engage, the least that I can do is try to be as positive as possible. So that is the way I have gone into this. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, I guess, making fun of people or things like that, like, sure, obviously, like I talk about my family and I, you know, give grief to my mom and things like that. But for me, it's <laughs> all coming from a place of love and that mm -hmm. being able to be seen allows me and I think any comedian to have that relationship with their audience where their audience trusts you because they know you're coming from a place of love. So even if you say something 
that seems a little far off, mm-hmm. um, having that trust allows allows people to laugh and then you you come back to you know you come back to the 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 loving place (laughs) okay okay and what has been like the greatest source of uh material for you outside of like yeah like your personal friends and family oh my god the greatest source of material is my personal friends and family Ah! like I yeah no there's nothing I mean I'm sure I'll get to a point where I'm just Jerry Seinfeld and I'm like, what is the deal with uh, phones being implanted in our head? Mm -hmm. But at this point, like I am still processing so much of my life. Like my mom is a hippie. My dad is a Muslim. Like they had Mm -hmm. a child. Like I'm a hippie Muslim. Like what, what does that even mean? There's still so much that I need to work out I just don't yeah I don't even know how many years it's going to take me to to get through all of this stuff like that is my friends and family there's so much to unpack wow okay and do you have like mentors or uh, people who help you essentially be better at your craft or that you look up to and help you be a better comedian yeah I mean mentor is a is a great word but I feel like people get confused about what it means because Mm -hmm. people look to find someone that they like claim as their mentor. And they're Mm -hmm. like, this person uh, tells me what to do. But so I have found like mentors in like, even this sounds silly, but like my dog Neptune, like he is so present. Like he is constantly like living 100% like in the now Mm -hmm. that like that's something I, when I look at him, I'm like, Oh yeah, I need to like live right now. So like he is a mentor to me or he is someone I look up to and learn from. And so there's people, yeah, there's like comedians like Wanda Sykes, uh, this woman, Jess Hilarious, Mm. um, like Tiffany Haddish, Jada Pinkett Smith, like all of these women who do comedy. I definitely look up to them. And although I don't have a personal relationship with any of them yet, Mm -hmm. um, they are people that I feel inspired by or learn from. And then kind of like everybody that comes into my daily life, Mm -hmm. there's a lot to learn from. And then this is like some meta stuff is that, so I record my shows and then I watch them back and I learn so much from myself. Like Mm. I learn how I'm not being clear enough. Like when a joke doesn't land and I watch it and I'm like, Oh, I didn't explain that joke well enough for them to get the punchline. Mm. So I would say as crazy as it sounds, I'm like my biggest mentor when Mm. I'm, when I can watch myself from a distance. That's brilliant. And I hope that everyone listening really uh, lets that sit and uh, percolate in their, in their mind, because you're absolutely right. Like it's actually not crazy. I think the best way to learn from how to, how to improve yourself and how to move forward and grow is yourself. Right. And if you have that opportunity Mm -hmm. to be able to record what you're doing and documenting your experiences and then going back and and doing that self-reflection and seeing wow, I really enjoy doing this or wow, this could have gone differently. I think that that's brilliant. So no, that's dope. I love it. Okay. And then (laughs) um, with, uh, so how did you um, also, because it's, it's one thing to be like in front of the camera and to be, you know, kind of the entertainment, but how did you know you also wanted to have a hand behind the scenes and produce and like have the control in front and behind of the, behind the camera? Yeah. So I would say that I very much fell into. And I would also say for any creators um, coming up, that is something you should purposefully fall into. Mm -hmm. I majored in film and theater in college. So I did do some production stuff there just as like part of the major. But then when I graduated, the work that I was getting was producerial. And so that I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the best one that I can be, which is another thing that I'm just never trying to do something half-ass, I guess Mm -hmm. you could say, or like 50%. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. It's not what I want to be doing, but I'm going to learn how to do this because this is a job that I get paid for. And until I get paid for the, you know, 100% things I want to do, I'm going to be the best at this. And then in doing that, I found the parts that I love of that. And so now I wouldn't have it any other way 
where I'm not involved behind the scenes and in front of the camera because it's just such a rewarding process. And also, like, Sterling K. Brown said this in his last acceptance speech. I cannot remember which award he was getting it for, but it was it was for This Is Us. Mm-hmm. And he said it is such an honor to be playing the this role because it is a role specifically written for a black man like no yeah. other person other than a black man could play this and that is what happens behind the camera is that you know now diversity is important and people are switching white characters to black or asian or this or that and that's fine i you know diversity should be on screen but it's another thing to have a character that could not be any other race or gender or non-conforming gender you know what I mean like that is something that we need to strive for and that is something that I can do behind the scenes I love that yes exactly and uh yeah you're right I mean I think that there's it's too so when it comes to diversity there's definitely yeah like the path of we should be able to have a role and switch out any person in that role so that way people can see and experience it differently but then we also have to have content and shows and productions that are designing characters for the Asian woman, for the Indian man, for the black man, for, you know, Mm -hmm. that people Mm -hmm. feel like they're not only, like they're not replaceable, but that this was literally for them, for a community, for a certain message that they want put across. So I I loved, I loved when he said that he's so remarkable. And that show is, I know. Every time it's like, oh my god, like you're just you know, yeah. like, and uh, I'm I'm a longtime fan of Mandy Moore, so I'm just like, oh my gosh, Mandy, every day, <laughs> like I can't with you. <laughs> but uh, oh, we digress. Um, so okay, so along this journey, I'd love to hear your thoughts on with like everything happening with the Me Too movement. Um, you know, how has your journey, both as an entertainer and also as a creator, content creator? Uh, been affected by being a woman by being a person of color I'd love to hear both the good the bad and everything in between Mm -hmm. so yeah I'm loving this movement I Mm -hmm. wish you know it I wish it never had had to happen and that it was never a thing I also wish it had come sooner like there's Mm. a lot of you know confliction around this I have been incredibly fortunate that I have not had uh I I don't want to say I haven't had a me too moment because I think just being a woman or a minority like there are always the times where you're getting unwanted attention Mm -hmm. and you're like why is this happening Mm -hmm. so I've definitely had the moment but I have been very fortunate in not having any extremes of that and so for me that has has been like a crazy uh lucky I mean statistically I'm an impossibility like that's Mm -hmm. what's so sad Mm -hmm. um but I what am I trying to say like in this industry Mm -hmm. that is rampant and it's always been rampant Mm -hmm. and it's shocking that it has taken this long to come to a point but Mm -hmm. I'm glad that it has I worry about like the, not the kickback of this, but like one of the hardest things about having a mentor is a lot of men are in these positions of power and Mm -hmm. and they don't want to mentee women. They don't want to have a a mentee that's a woman because of like a situation that could happen like this. And so Mm. this I think is an opportunity to express all of these sentiments Mm -hmm. but to also create a path where men and women can work together Mm -hmm. and maybe men give men like better guidelines so that those relationships can build because I think that's the second half of the me too is Mm -hmm. that you know not all of these all the men who are doing terrible things I hope they get kicked out of power and all that Mm -hmm. but all of the men who are still in power and are not doing those things to encourage them to continue if they're not already reaching out to people of color and to women to strengthen these bonds so Mm -hmm. that it's not a matter of like, okay, I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm just going to not engage with any of these people and only hang out with other dudes. 
That's interesting. So, yeah, now that you said that. Yeah, wow. Okay. So that to me, I, I would say is what I feel about the Me Too movement is, mm. is I'm looking to, at the next step of that, gotcha. which is now engaging the community to figure out how we move forward in a productive way so that if there's no more Me Too mm-hmm. and it's all of us now are moving forward as a collective and men and women, men are not afraid to be around women and women are not afraid to be around men. Absolutely. You know what? I think that that's interesting because um, when I, yeah, when I first started hearing the stories and everything, it's like, yes, finally, you know, we have a voice, right? It's the year of the woman. We are, you know, we're going to not be silenced anymore. But that is a really good point that you're putting out there that, you know, there is could potentially there could be um, a little bit of an issue in the sense of, yeah, like men not wanting to be in a situation, right, where they can be accused of being a little less kosher. So maybe they'll avoid and they'll be kind of hands offish on things. But I think that the solution, like you're saying, is in addition to like moving past it and and being more community oriented is I do think that men, there needs to be sensitivity training, right? Like I think that, and that, that mm-hmm. might sound crazy, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, how can a man always know when a woman is not comfortable if, if he's not, like, he doesn't know her experience, he doesn't know her narrative, right? And I think that there needs to be, I mean, I don't know how you handle it on the adult level, but at least on the ch- children level, I think that the, the next stage of Me Too definitely should be, we should be addressing this in schools and, like, what's appropriate to say and not say with girls, what's appropriate a touching, what is not appropriate touching, what is appropriate behavior when people are socializing. I think there has to be an ed- educational po- uh, component to this movement if you want like long standing change. So I, I would hope to see that like other, you know, areas where you can implement that via government, via educational systems. Uh, I hope that they, you know, take note of that as well. But okay, but that's good to hear that you have been successful and you yourself haven't necessarily had to feel like you were compromised or, you know, uncomfortable uh, more often than not then, right? Yeah, I mean, I think something, like, I, there are systems of oppression and that racism and sexism and all of those things exist, and I know all of those things have affected me. Mm-hmm. And there is one thing that I would, again, say to creators or anybody like trying to make it in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. is that even though all of those things exist, it can feel incredibly overwhelming. And there mm-hmm. have definitely been times where I've been like, I know I didn't get that role because mm-hmm. I'm a person of color. And like they cast someone, you know, I'm the daughter and they cast them on this white and I'm, I can't be, you know, in this, I can't be the daughter if I mix cause they don't want to cast mm-hmm. the black dad or like whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you can, hold in your mind and this is gonna also sound crazy but like a measure of uh like dream I want to say but like a measure of like not reality and just blindly and blindly is not the right word but just go into all of these situations of like why not me of course they're gonna cast me and they're gonna cast me and then they're gonna have to recast the mom because she doesn't look like me and that's what's gonna happen and Mm -hmm. going at life like that Mm. is I think the better angle if you can if you can wrap your mind around it because these Mm. things are going to happen no matter what so what you can do is for yourself is not let those things hold you back and just go like charging at it and that's I think something that I have done and not even really thought about it Mm -hmm. but just like I'm of course I'm going to do this. There's nothing else that I want to do. So this is what I'm going to do. And mm. then I think all of those other moments have slid more easily past me of like the frustration of not being a man or, you know, a mm. white woman or any of those things is because I'm, I'm, I choose to put some blinders on when I think it helps me, I would say. Mm. I love it. Yeah, it's because you're saying, because, and that's important. That's an important lesson for women, especially, right? Because I, I, I forget where I saw the source, but, you know, more women than not will not apply for certain opportunities because they'll look through the job requirements, right? And say, oh, well, I, if I yes. can't 70% of it, I can't apply. But what you're saying is, you know, 
kind of uh, look look past just like what something is and like, do you want to do this? And if so, put yourself out there, right? Because if someone wants to hire you, they will rework the system. They will create the opportunity for you. Exactly. Things for you, but you, but they, they can only do that if you go out and put yourself out there. So I think anyone listening can listen to, especially, um, yeah, people who want to act and be, you know, and in the, in the public view, you've got to kind of be fearless, essentially what you're saying and, and, and the how mm-hmm. will work out after. And I, I think that that's absolutely right. Um, which then leads me to the next part of this conversation, which is obviously everyone listening can hear you are bad mama jamma. You are <laughs> unapologetically <laughs> a sister on fire. So uh, break it down for us. When, when you hear the term sister on fire, what does that mean to you? Ooh, a sister on fire. I mean, for oh. me, it is just someone, uh, whether they I whether they identify, I would say, as a woman or if they are just, who, if they identify as a sister, like, I don't even think you have to be a woman, but just someone straight crushing it, like, mm. doing all of the things, going above and beyond. Uh, making time, I would say, to give back to your community in whatever way that means to you. Mm. Um, And I think also, like, trying to find a balance. I know that sounds like less on fire, um, Mm -hmm. but, like, for me, having, being able to be on fire is, like, my support system. And Mm. so when I'm allowed to leave like I'm a tour so I have a dog and I have to leave him like when I have the support system to be able to leave him to go you know have my dreams and live my life and go do stand-up on the road and I have the you know support to uh like live a life in the entertainment industry and you know Mm -hmm. make money on Tuesday but not work the rest of the days like that I think is what allows you to be on fire and so Mm -hmm. a sister on fire to me has cultivated a community she gives back to her community she doesn't let anything stop her and she goes full throttle toward her dreams Mm -hmm. absolutely i love it okay so who were women in your life that lived up to that Mm, women in my life that lived up to that i mean i would say like do you mean people I know or people I don't know both right like if that that's a beautiful definition (laughs) so yeah like who were it could be your mom it could be Tiffany Haddish right like who were women that did that for you and then helped you like you know be who you are today yeah I think Tracy Ellis Ross is a big winner in that category Mm. um I used to watch her on I think it was Girlfriend Mm -hmm. um which was like back in the day, Tia and Tamara. I mean, I would say all of the women of color when I was growing up, Queen Latifah, that I just saw on screen mm-hmm. and were like, yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. So those ladies to me were always very inspiring. And it was um, never, seeing them, it was, it was never a thing where I was like, oh, I can't be on TV or I can't be a part of this Um, because I did have some pretty great role models. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very cool. Okay. So I guess then my next question would be, uh, you know, if someone is listening and they're like, oh my God, I love you or your story is so interesting, you know, what advice would you have for people interested in being a content creator, interested in making people laugh, trying to be true to themselves and their art. Like what were things that you did that helped you like go from stage A to B to C and onward? Um, show up. Mm. Is the number one thing mm. that is consistently, I mean, even when I'm hiring people, when mm. I've hired interns or PAs or something like that, there are people that don't show up, even interviews, like people just don't show up. Like it is, shocking the amount of people that don't show up so by showing up you're already doing better than 50 percent like you're already in the 50th percentile if you just show up which is wild (laughs) but that is so true that's crazy yeah (laughs) yeah be consistent and be persistent like both of those have to go 
hand in hand. Like the amount of not funny things I say, astronomical. Mm-hmm. The an- amount of not funny jokes I write, astronomical. I will write three pages and mm-hmm. pull out maybe one or two jokes, maybe. And those jokes are bad. And then I have to watch myself do them and be like, why was that not that funny? And then I can go again to write them. But like, mm. that is what you're dealing with. And the same thing with the content, the videos that I make. I spend a week writing four videos that are each a minute long. And I spend mm-hmm. a week doing that because it's wow. there's so much bad uh, or like unfunny or whatever you want to call it. And that's mm-hmm. the process. So people think, oh, I can't write or, oh, I'm not funny or, oh, you know, that video I made wasn't funny or I did stand up once and it wasn't. And that is, that's the beginning. That Mm -hmm. you even trying the thing, that is not even your starting point. That's like, okay, now you can start. Wow. That's like, okay, if you did that one thing, now you're ready to like participate in the game, like get to the starting line if you just showed up once. And then the game is really just like letting yourself fail for that one time that you succeed. And I think that's where people get thrown off and where they quit or they don't show up is that they see all of the bad that is coming out of it and they Mm -hmm. don't stick around or they don't feel like that moment or that one joke is good. Like if I really thought about it and I was like, I write three pages and get one joke, like that's not a great ratio, but that is <laughs> <laughs> like at all. That's bad, mm-hmm. but, but it's not bad. That is my process. Like, will I get better? Sure. Maybe I won't though. Like maybe I will always write three pages and get one joke, but mm-hmm. it's that one joke. And that is the one joke where I build and I write three more pages and get another joke. And if you write three pages every day and you get one joke, like you will have an hour in less than a year, like you'll be golden. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. just consistent consistency, persistence, and showing up. I love it. I love it. And then also just to, you know, because social media is so big and you slay at uh, getting your message out and creating, you know, these successful videos and stuff. How, how have you, I guess, what tips do you have for helping people, you know, similarly figure out a way to navigate social media? How do they, how do they make sure that that video that they're putting out there gets heard, gets seen, and gets the attention so that they can now move to the next thing. Yeah. So again, this is like such a numbers game. I know that sounds crazy, but Mm -hmm. it really is not about you being the funniest or like that one video being good. Like I've literally released videos where I'm like, this video is going to slay and Mm -hmm. it does terribly. Mm -hmm. And so it is getting your message out there. Like the amount of money that companies spend on advertising for a movie Mm -hmm. can be more than it costs to make the movie. Like Mm -hmm. that's a possibility because it's not that the movie's not good. It's that people don't know about it. So when you make your content, get the word out. Like, Mm -hmm. again, be consistent. Be making content every day or every week so that you can keep pushing it out because then finally there's going to be that one friend. Like this happened to me like a month ago. Somebody was like, oh, you make content? And I was like, what? I've been doing this for 10 years. Like, <laughs> you just saw this? Like, what is going on? But that's the reality of it. So in yeah. every way that you can, push it out to everybody. Push it out mm-hmm. to everybody. Submit it to blogs, vlogs, uh, all of these things. One way that I think is more successful than just being like, hey, watch my thing is Mm -hmm. to make it a collaboration. And instead of making it about your project, to make it about the other person to say, hey, Mm -hmm. like tag this person in the post. Like, hey, Cindy, like, thank you so much for being a part of this project. Then Mm -hmm. Cindy's friends see that like, oh, Cindy did this thing. Like, I'll check it out. And also like it, your project is being brought up with it but also it's like giving credit where credit is due. So I think it's super important to, you know, work with other people and to like celebrate other people. Or if you do a video and it's just you, but you do it about uh, like snack food, right? Like shout (laughs) it out to like Nabisco, like shout it out out to like 
places that make snack food to say, I was inspired to do this video because of you. Like, thank you so much for making great snack food. Like, you know, pump other people up. Other people mm -hmm. love to be pumped up. And when other people are pumped up, they will pump you up. I love it. I love it. You're just like naturally funny. You're like having me giggle and you're like talking <laughs> about real things. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's true though. Like, no, like, that's, I, that's real. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like facts 100% like you're not even lying um, okay so uh what are some things that like people can support you right they're listening to you and they're like yes she's dope love her what are projects you're working on what are things that are currently out that you'd love for people to follow and support you on yes so that being said like come and check out my Facebook page it's at the Kaja Martin I'm putting out videos every mm -hmm. Friday at 9 a.m. There's also mm -hmm. going to be more videos coming and web series. Uh, there's also like a ton of great other actors in the stuff that I'm making. So if you think I'm funny, you're going to love the people that I work with. Okay. Really funny to me. That's the other thing. Surround yourself with people that are better than you. Because mm -hmm. then you will rise to their greatness. So, so yeah, so Facebook is, is the best place to find me. Um, okay. And yeah, just check out my page. There's a ton of videos there, uh, pictures, all the things you would want to see. And then also when I'm performing, it will also be on my Facebook. So you'll be able to catch me doing stand-up and the info will all be there. Perfect. Any to, anytime you plan to be in the New York area, soon or no? <laughs> not, not, it's not on my schedule yet, but that's the other okay. thing about this industry is I can be booked for a show like next week and then I'll be like, okay, now I'm going to New York. Yeah, it's just, it's, it all depends. Okay, okay. And out of curiosity, what was like the best uh, stand up you've ever done? Like, what town, what city were you in? Hmm, I would say there's two. Uh, the Improv in San Jose. That is a great theater. Okay. Also, I'm from the Bay Area, so like my people showed up to like to represent for me. So mm -hmm. it was just like such a supportive crowd. Aww. And the other place is Huntsville, Alabama. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, gotta give it up for Huntsville. I had no idea that Huntsville was like so woke and so down. Um, but they were just great. Yeah, I'm 90% sure it was Huntsville. I think there's like a NASA station there. Mm. And it's just like a, a bunch of like super smart people who obviously there's like not a tremendous amount to do there. So when, you know, we came through, they were like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out to us, Phil. How you doing? Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> right? Shocker of the year. I was like so nervous to go there. And then I was like, "Months the shit. <laughs> That's dope. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So I definitely look forward to sharing all your social and details so people can connect with you and watch the content that you're making and again just thank you for being a part of this series you're amazing and just keep the fire blazing we we are so thrilled to have you a part of the series I will thank you so much thank you for doing this series like that's another thing yeah like we need more of this we need yeah. more of this 